About a month ago, I came across this video posted by Hank Green, which was a 30-minute TLDR about generative AI companies using videos to train AI LLMs. So of course, me being the nerd that I am, went into this investigative deep dive to find out whether or not any of my videos were used to train AI models. I mean, after all, I've been on YouTube for 16 years now. My face and voice are in thousands of tech videos across probably 50 or more channels as a guest or a main host. So yeah, this channel is nowhere near my first rodeo and with this huge portfolio of data for AI to scrape, did they? Well, guess what I found? So before I get into what I found, I did want to disclose that I do use AI tools. In my last video, I showed you how I use Gemini AI to perfect photos that I took while I was on vacation. I've also used it to help me brainstorm ideas for video topics or to make a list of tags for my videos, which saves me tons of time. See, I love using today's products for my online lifestyle. And since I heavily rely on today's tech, I also take it a step further by securing all of those tools. The sponsor of today's video is Yubico. And one of the ways that I secure my accounts online is with a YubiKey. See, these little things look like a USB flash drive, but it's actually used to specifically add a second layer of authentication to your online accounts. See, instead of typing in a six digit code after my password, which can be bypassed or stolen, I could plug one of these in on supported sites and quickly log in. Yubico has worked to bring us some brand new keys with firmware 5.7. I actually have one of the new ones here with me and it looks exactly like the old ones. This allows for up to 100 pass keys and 64 OAuth one-time passcode seeds. Yubica listened to your concerns and they increased the capacity. This is a really big deal as more companies move to support pass keys and hardware keys like these, as it means that Yubico is future-proofing their products. I also recently started using the new Yubico Authenticator app and it is so smooth now. The update brings us an Android edition which supports FIDO functions like managing your pins, your pass keys, and fingerprints now on mobile. And it's really easy to use the app to protect six digit codes with a hardware key. If you're wondering how to do that, I actually made a tutorial video on it. Personally, I have used YubiKeys for several years to protect my online accounts. It's so much more secure and convenient for me to set up a couple of hardware keys to unlock my accounts quickly. My video playlist on my YouTube channel goes over every single common question that you may have about YubiKeys, including where and when you will likely need to use them. But if you are ready to take the next step in securing your online identity, go over to ub.co slash Shannon-2024 to get $5 off a brand new firmware 5.7 YubiKey. That's ub.co slash Shannon-2024 for $5 off. And thank you so much to Yubico for sponsoring my channel. Okay, so using YouTube videos to train AI tools. Now I used proof news tool to search some of the channels that I have been on to see if my videos were ever used. And yeah, <laughs> I found three of them. <laughs> the first one was a hack five threat wire video that I had researched, wrote, scripted, recorded, produced, and edited. And a generative AI company is using that video that I took hours to produce in order to train their AI. And then I searched for Techzilla and I found two videos of which I had written and scripted and hosted the segments which were used to train AI. And I also found another Techzilla video which was produced and edited and written by one of my old co-hosts. Now in one of those videos that I was in, my co-host was also on camera camera and speaking, meaning that he's also a part of this training model. Now, given that I've got a pretty large portfolio as a host over the span of a decade and a half, there are probably other videos that have been used as well that I just haven't found, or quite simply, I might have forgotten that I had hosted in the first place. None of these videos are new. All of them are around a decade old, making the findings even more odd. Now, given that this data set is largely accessing content from educational creators, and a ton of my content over the years has been educational, there's probably more out there. In all of those cases, I was a contractor or an employee at a network publication where I was hired as a host. 
this is my independent channel that I'm working on, Morse code. It's something that I created and that I own. But in those cases with Hack5 and Techzilla, I was a contractor or an employee. I was contracted to host, write, and report for those various shows. Now, Proof News also found subtitles from over 170,000 videos, including 48,000 channels that were used to train AI by companies like Anthropic, NVIDIA, Apple, and Salesforce. So by no means am I the only creator with content found via this tool. Now, Proof News did not disclose exactly how they found this data set in this database, just that it was publicly available and not easy to access without some kind of technical expertise. But they did find subtitles, which they then used video IDs and queried YouTube's dev tools, which are available out there to get metadata for each video included to create a searchable library of the titles, channels, and categories. Now, after finding my own data, I won't lie, I felt a little bit ticked off and a little bit exploited. Content creators are constantly told that what we do is not a real job. I've actually had somebody say that to my face and that we should not be paid for our value for our time and our labor. Meanwhile, we are also putting literal blood, especially if you're like building computers on camera, sweat and tears into our businesses. I built this studio and that was a very sweaty summertime venture. <laughs> In the case of the Proof News findings, the YouTube subtitles dataset is only the plain text of YouTube subtitles, along with translations into various other languages. But even so, those are scripts that I had written that took hours and hours to write that these companies are scraping to train AI. Now this data set, it's called The Pile, and it was created by a company called Luther AI. It's publicly accessible and lots of big tech companies use The Pile for their own AIs. Now, other than all the big tech companies using this data set and my own personal qualms with it, there's another issue. The Pile also contains several instances of profanities, racial slurs, and gender slurs. So AI LLMs are being trained on that particular content, and my own content is being lumped in with content that, quite frankly, I don't ethically agree with. Now, unfortunately, because the videos I found on the pile are from channels that I was never an owner of, I don't think that I have any say in the matter. I was an employee or a contractor, and legally, those channels were allowed to use those videos that I produced for them. But how do these channel owners feel about the content that they were paying me to create being used to build AI LLMs without any compensation to them or to me. I currently run three different channels that I own. And if my current channels were used without my consent, I would want compensation or the ability to remove those videos from being used to train AI. Given that all of my videos are freely available, but I also use YouTube's copyright guidelines and tools to ensure that I am properly credited for my work, I have no issue with a company using my content content whenever I am properly credited or compensated. There's two different things there. Both of them are important because again, each of the thousands of videos that I have created in the past decade and a half were in fact written by this brain and these hands. Okay. Okay. So according to reports, Google has also used YouTube videos to train AI models, of which it states that it's permitted to do so under agreements with YouTube creators. And since I am using the YouTube platform and agreed to their terms of service, that's not the issue here. But the videos that I had created that were found in this data set are from 2014, and I had never signed any contracts with the channels that explicitly said that my likeness or written scripts could be used to train AI. That wasn't even a thing back in 2014. Terms of use, of course, have been updated since then on YouTube, but some of the channels where you can still find my content are not even active anymore. So did those channel operators agree to any changes in the terms? Did they even see that the terms had changed? Do those email inboxes actually have anybody even checking them? Who knows? Proof News found that the pile also included data from thousands of videos that had been deleted off of YouTube, but the data was still used to train AI. So even if I had access to those channels to just delete those videos, the scripts would not be removed from the pile. So here's the fun crux of the situation. I believe that building the future of technology and using AI for productivity, 
accessibility or efficiency is not problematic, as we have used technology innovations for decades to do this very thing. But I'm also a creator, and artists in general have constantly had to tell society that our output should be compensated for. YouTube now creates automatic subtitles for videos, and they do this with AI, though I generally paste in my own copy so the subtitles are authentic and they are indeed correct. This is great for accessibility and turning off closed captioning on my channel as a whole or turning off subtitles would remove that accessibility. So really, I don't want to remove that option so that my viewers continue to have that option. So currently YouTube Studio allows you to disclose whether or not you have used AI for a video, but there's no button in the settings that I can click to opt in or out of my data being used to train AI models. There's also no compensation if my data is being used, and YouTube does not disclose on a video by video basis if any of those videos are used to train third party AIs. Now weirdly, YouTube CEO has said that using videos to train AI violates the platform's terms. In fact, you can see him speaking about that in this video here. But the problem is, once it's been used, you can't just make an AI model unlearn that thing that it's already learned. You can take it away, but the knowledge is already there. My problem is not necessarily having my content used, it's having it used without my consent or not being compensated. Creators should be given a choice in the matter. My content has always been free to watch on YouTube with the understanding that I get paid because I put ads in these videos or I use monetization tools. But if somebody copies and re-uploads my content, my likeness, I have the legal tools to not only flag that channel, but also get my content removed from that channel. I can do this on social media sites too. If somebody re-uploads my photography, those photos are my material and legally, I'm allowed to send a DMCA takedown if I wanted to. From a consumer standpoint, many of these generative AI companies are using subscription-based models to make money, or they get paid by big brands. For example, Gemini will be a subscription-based model, ChatGPT has a subscription option, other tech companies have paid AI companies and either bought them out or they pay for access to those LLMs. Given that these companies have to use content from so many different locations, it would not be profitable to compensate everybody, especially where they're using all that different data. So instead, they just take whatever is publicly accessible and they use it without a creator's consent or knowledge. So is that fair? Should we pay for these subscriptions if they're using our own data to make those AI models better? As usual, creators are kind of left out in the cold while the big tech brands are exploiting the content that we are creating. I have a feeling if Proof News didn't come out with this tool, then we would have never even known that videos were being used for AI. So in a, in a sense, they done got caught red-handed and they don't wanna pay the people who made that content. If somebody used a video creation AI tool and they used the pile to recreate my voice, my inflections, my kind of quirky way of saying things, then I would feel very violated, especially if that recreation was made to say things that I ethically and morally don't agree with and would never say. This is an actual hot mess. And if you've been watching my videos lately, you know that currently legal and regulatory powers have not caught up up with tech and AI, so we really don't have the tools necessary to combat non-consensual use. Now, while some cases have been brought in front of the courts, in fact, there's a whole website dedicated to being an AI watchdog, there is no set law regarding AI training on publicly available creations. So will artists and creators ever have that power to give or opt out of consensual use? Will we ever be given an option to monetize that usage? Gee, that would be nice. It's always good to pay bills. It's a subject that I have been thinking about long before video creators were caught in the crosshairs. For me, this started happening because I support a lot of creators who design anime characters. And in the anime community, there's a ton of artists who draw their own characters. I have my own original character that was drawn by an artist. Just now, it's affecting a lot of video creators. So now it's relevant to my YouTube channel, hence the video. So let me know what you think. Sound off down below. And thank you again so much to Yubico for sponsoring this video. I'll see you next time. Bye, y'all.